बोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समीपे रहो हमारी ये ह श्री गण श्याम महाराज नी जय श्री स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी आर बिलवेड गण श्याम महाराज पूज्य पाद पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज माय जय स्वामी नारायण You remember the time or you're probably experiencing the time right now in high school everyone gets to take history a class which teaches the history of the United States particularly in history class if you remember you learn about many many things the civil war the american revolution World War 1, World War 2. And when we're learning about world wars, many many images and thoughts come into our mind, such as D-Day or Pearl Harbor or Adolf Hitler or Nazis or even Uncle Ben, the army, the draft, jets, fighter planes, and even Japan. I stop at Japan. Why? Because particularly after bombing Pearl Harbor, the Japanese got something you can say a surprise that was unexpected. Two atomic bombs dropped in the city of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was unfortunate, but it was expected because they gave a sneak attack at pearl harbor so the united states retaliated by dropping two atom bombs in the year of 1945 just 3 days apart from one another in the cities of nagasaki and hiroshima wiping out thousands and thousands of people i stopped there at the atom bomb now the atom bomb is something which is not a normal weapon. I was researching about the atom bomb and I found some interesting things that I wanted to share. You're probably wondering how this ties into a spiritual content, but when I get to my point, you'll understand very well. But before that, I need to give some supporting evidence about the atom bomb and how explosive it is. So, as I was reading, I found out obviously it's a nuclear weapon. And the atom bomb, what it does is it pretty much wipes out if it's dropped on a city, it wipes out the entire city with its people for the radius of 5 miles. Now, it's all physics, but when nuclear it's nuclear reaction when the nucleus of such elements like uranium split it causes an explosion and a great energy thermal energy is created by this split so the atom bomb is just the splitting of you can say an element like uranium and the energy that's created by it it's great and catastrophic now what it does is when it blows up on any area supposedly a city what it does is in that radius of about 5 miles everything becomes wiped out meaning from people to trees to plant plants it's the smallest even micro you can say bacteria and even buildings big things small things everything is just completely destroyed just like how sometimes if your gardener comes and uh you have some trees to cut what he does is He cuts the tree, and he also brings a big machine in the back of his truck. It's attached to the truck, and when he turns it on, and when he throws those branches in, those branches are huge. But when he throws it into that machine, it becomes like dust, and there's nothing left of the branch. You can't even tell it was a branch before. In the same way, an atom bomb completely destroys everything and anything in its path. it also leaves radiation and gamma rays behind 
which causes cancer to animals, creatures, and especially humans. Now, these are just small facts about the atom bomb. I just want you to understand what it is exactly before we get into our subject today. When we hear this word in our history class, two things occur in our mind. We think about, first of all, whoa, that's awesome. The great explosion happens and everyone's very interested in it because no one's ever seen something like that. And the second thought is devastation, obviously, because just imagine about how many people die from it. But moreover, when you think of the atom bomb, I want you to think about complete annihilation, complete wipeout. Why? Because today's subject has something to do with the atom bomb. I want to read a small paragraph, a purport from the Vachnamrut, Gudra middle chapter, fourth Vachnamrut. Sriji Maharaj himself says, that no matter how many sins one may have committed, if I'm merely if one merely utters the name of God, even once, all of one's sins will be burnt to ashes. I think you know where I'm getting at now. Just like how the atom bomb annihilates and destroys everything in its radius of five miles, in the same particular manner, by chanting the Maha Mantra, Swami Narayan, one's sins are burned away and completely annihilated. Moreover, in the Vachanamrit Gadara, first chapter 56, however a grave sinner a person may be, if at the end of his life he utters Swaminarayan, he will be redeemed of all his sins and will reside in Akshradham. Now these are the two references Bhagwan has said about the Mahamantra Swaminarayan in the Vachanamrit. And also, Bhagwan has spoken about it in the form of if one is being attacked by inner enemies like anger, lust, greed, then one should clap loudly and chant the Mahamantra Swami Narayan and remember great saints. But my point is this mantra, this word, this six syllable, you can say word, is not ordinary. The reason why it's called a mantra is because it has extraordinary emphasis to it. It has extraordinary power to it. You may not see it. Let me give you an example. We breathe oxygen, do we see it? No, yet it's there, you know. You're breathing it every day, in and out. You're living as a human on this earth, so you know it's there. Yet, yeah, scientifically proven it's there, but you just can't see it. In the same particular manner, Mahamantra Swami Narayan is something which is not ordinary. It's just not found in your regular dictionary of Webster or anywhere else. But it's something which is beyond the mind, beyond imagination. Because, first of all, it's the name of God. And secondly, it manifested from Bhagwan Swamiran himself in the village of Fareni about 200 years ago. So Bhagwan himself gave this mantra. It's not written by great saints or rushis. And this is the only mantra that has been manifested by God himself. There's been 24 avatars. And out of the 24 avatars, those avatars who have manifested like Ram Krishna, Vishnu, etc. They have never given a mantra out. But Bhagwan Swamiran himself from his own mouth, when he came on this earth from Akshardham, gave this mantra out and told everyone to chant it. But if I just tell you, you should chant this mantra and you listen to me and you would start chanting it, I think that's highly likely that that would happen. I'll have to show some kind of incentive, just like how a parent, if he wants his son or daughter to eat, then first they would give something sweet or something that that child likes before giving them vegetables, carrots, and all the, give, all the proteins. You give some kind of, you can say, candy at first or even some kind of uh, pudding or something that that child likes 
And then slowly, slowly with that item, they would also give that child vegetables and the proteins that that child needs. In the same manner, if I just tell you to just chant the mantra, it's not going to happen. Even by just listening like that. But here's some intent incentives that I think would motivate you to chant the mantra even in the time of misery or even not in the time of misery. First and foremost, this mantra, it can be chanted anywhere. There are some rules that, you know, special Hindu mantras, they can be chanted only in special areas and you have to be very, very pure and you have to sit in one area. No, there's no restriction to this mantra. Bhagavan Swamiran has set, has not set any limit to it. You can chant it anywhere you like. That's the number one benefit. Meaning, if you're in a train, or you're in your car, or even at school, or even if you are in the mandir, or even if you're outside of mandir, anywhere and everywhere, it can be chanted. There's no limit. Also, another benefit to this mantra is if you chant one time the mantra Swamiyarn, compared, it's compared to a thousand names of other avatars. That's how strong the mantra is. Also, a benefit, it gives akshardham, something that all of us might desire or might not desire, but will get by chanting this mantra. Also, by listening to this, our sins are burned. That's what we learned. Also, ghost and yamdut run away. They're driven away. Spiritual knowledge is obtained. Our soul becomes purified. Now, these are just namingly some benefits. You're probably still not satisfied. Let's just say that it's just not, you're just listening to this lecture and it's just not, you're just, it's just not clicking. You're still not coming up that you still don't feel motivated enough that, you know, I should chant the mantra. Well, I'm going to read a Swami Nivato. Sadhguru Gunatiran Swami, around 200 years ago, had many, many discourses and talks in Junagar Mandir there in the Sabha Mandap. And there, while Swami talked, there was a devotee or a saint who would write his talks down. Out of them, I want to read you a talk that Swami has told everyone. I'm going to first read it in Gujarati, best of my knowledge, and then I'll translate it, and then we'll analyze it. Swami Narayan Hare. Ane Swami Narayan Nam no mantra jeo bijo koi mantra आज बढ़ियो न थी ये मंत्र काढ़ना काढ़नो नाग जेर उतारे अने मंत्र विषय उड़ी जाए ब्रह्म रूप थई जवाए अने काढ़ कर्म अन मायनो बंधन छूटी जाए ये वो बहु बढ़ियो ये मंत्र अच्छे माटे निरंतर भजन करो स्वामी इस सेइंग दैट द स्वामी ने मंत्र इज अ वेरी स्ट्रांग मंत्र इट्स नॉट ओर्डिनरी बाय chanting that mantra, even the venom from a nag, meaning a snake, a cobra, can be diluted. And even by chanting the mantra vishes, meaning the panch vishes, the worldly pleasures of this world, would go away and one would become brahmrup. And kaad, karma, and maya would not be able to bound one who chants this mantra. Therefore, one should chant this mantra. That's all Swami is saying. So out of all those things Swami said about the benefit of chanting this mantra, you're probably wondering. I mean, one can believe all the religious aspect of, you know, God, karma, and maya not bounding us, you know, time, this illusion not bounding us. Even vishes, meaning panch vishes, the worldly pleasures can be driven away. But out of them, you're probably thinking, a cobra's venom, can that really be diluted? I mean, that's something that's scientific, and that's something that has something to do with the body, not the mind. Because if a snake bites you by chanting something, how could it, you know, how could it even touch your body, or what can it do to your body? Because you would need medical help. You would need some kind of anti-venom, or some antidote to help your body recover. I mean, we can think about mind, 
we our soul can be purified by uh, by uh, you know chanting the mantra of Swami Narayan, but our body in no way. You probably don't believe it, but I actually found a story in the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, which actually has exactly what Swami is saying. A venom can be diluted, and let me show you how, or let me tell you how. So there was a devotee by the name of Kesarbhai. And he was a great devotee of Bhagwan Swamiran who lived in the region of Kutch, Gujarat. He was a farmer by occupation, and he had a farm. And every day he would go to the farm. And um, in the farm there was a well. And every day he would go to the well to wash his clothes. Obviously in those days they didn't have nice GE dryers or Electrolux dryers and washers like us right now. But they had to go to the well and they had to wash their clothes manually there. And so Kesarbhai always went to the well and came back. And, uh, you know, he washed his clothes there. But he knew that there was something mysterious living there, a black cobra, a snake, a venomous snake, probably the most deadliest snake. And it was living by the well. He knew this. But he did his bhajan and he did his work and he left the snake to do its own thing. You know, he didn't bother with it. But Kesarbhai, also, the problem was that this snake disturbed many, many outside people, you know, all, all around neighbors of uh, Kesarbhai, his farm. And all the villagers were very, very upset by this snake because it disturbed everyone. You know, it would snake away, uh, it would uh, scare away the cattle. It would, uh, you know, scare away people, the kids. You have to be careful with them. So the townspeople went to Kesarbe one day and told him, you have to remove this snake. You know, it's only for the benefit of the village. It's only for the benefit of this cattle and these kids. Kesarbe said, all being the devotee of God, there's no reason to remove this snake. If you had a home and someone told you to come out of it and stay somewhere else, how would you feel without any kind of uh, money or anything, just kicked you out of your home? In the same way, I don't want to kick the snake out of its own home because Bhagwan has given him this home. It's the well in my farm. So be it. So the devotees, you know, or the townspeople, they, you know, they couldn't stand it because their cattle and their kids, they became scared always. So they called the snake charmer. And snake charmer, what he does is plays this music and the, the snake becomes charmed and then the snake charmer catches the snake and well, up to the snake charmer, he might kill the snake or he might throw it in a different area. So they call him. You can say they hired a snake charmer. And the snake charmer uh, pretty much, you know, came and Kesarbe saw him in his farm, in his well. So he pretty much stopped him. He said, why are you here? What are you doing? You know, he said, the townspeople have, you know, told me to come and catch this snake. He said, I can't allow you to do that, my friend. You know, uh, I don't know what you'll do to the snake. If you kill it, then I don't want to take the sin of you killing the snake charmer. If you don't kill it and throw it somewhere else, then where will it go to live? So there's many, many, you can say, problems for this snake. So I, I, this is my farm. This is my property. I don't want you to come here anymore. You should go away. So the snake charmer, obviously, just being a hired person to do a job, uh, pretty much just went away. But then the townspeople became worried, but they couldn't do anything else. So time went on, and one day Kesarbe was going to his farm again to the well to wash his clothes. And while he was uh, just rolling up some buckets for water, his foot must have stepped where the snake's house was, and the snake must have been coming out. And right there, when he stepped on the snake, the snake bit him, right there. So, obviously, in any situation, I was researching a little bit, if one is bitten by a snake, especially a venomous snake like a king cobra, then you have about one hour. Within one hour, uh, you start to go pale. And within two hours, the venom spreads throughout your body and you die. These are true cases that has happened before. Also, uh, 
if you don't receive any kind of antidote within the hour, the venom is too much spread out in your body and you will die. So what to do, what not to do. Obviously, being a devotee and all, Kesarbe started to chant the mantra Swami Narayan. Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. Nothing else, not even mom, dad, nothing. No relatives, he didn't call for anyone. He started chanting Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. He went and ran to his temple. And he chanted Swami Narayan. All his relatives found out of this. And all of them gathered there. All the townspeople gathered there. And what they decided to do, they didn't have a lot of time. What they decided to do was to call. Um, in India, in that time, there was a lot of superstition. So they believed in other deity gods to, you know, come, not come themselves, but to call you know, their saints and to have them tie some knots around. And there's many super, uh, superstitious uh, rituals. I don't know particularly all of them, but pretty much the gist of it in short is what they decide to call a different saint from a different religion who believed in a different deity god to try to dilute this anti-venom. Obviously, again, being a devotee and all, having faith in Bhagwan Swamir and only, he's, he denied all of the townspeople and his relatives. Do not call anyone. This venom will, di will be diluted if it wants to, or else it's Bhagwan's wish to take me to Akshardham. So as time went on, Kesarbe chanted. Half an hour went by, 45 minutes went by, one hour went by, an hour and a half, two hours. Kesarbe started chanting and kept chanting, and all the townspeople and all his family members around in that temple surrounded him, also chanted the mantra Swami Narayan. They continued for one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours. And after 24 hours, miraculously, that venom was diluted. Gisarbhai got back up and just went back to his farming activity. There was no note of any other, you can say, side effects or any other note of any kind of amputation he had to do, where he was bitten, nothing. Nothing had happened. After he chanted the mantra, and he continued to chant the mantra, after 24 hours, that, that mantra was diluted. Just like how anti-venom can pretty much dilute or reverse the effects of venom, in the same way, the Mahamantra Swamiran reversed the effects of that venom and Kesarbe's life was saved. Saying this, I think now, after learning not only the benefits, but after learning Swami Nivato, what Swami said about even a venom, snake venom being diluted, and after I telling you the pretty much a real life story of this being true i think you have many many incentives to chant this mantra i mean first and foremost let's just say there isn't going to be any kind of king cobras here in the city suburb like region where it's going to come and bite you so i don't think you have to worry about any kind of venomous snakes or scorpions or anything like that also you're not in any kind of situation where uh, your life is always at stake or anything like that, or you're haunted by ghosts or yamduts or anything like that. But in short, the mantra purifies one's heart and one can go to Akshardham. Let's just put it that way. To go to Akshardham, you have to chant this mantra, meaning do the bhajan of mantra. Do bhajan of this mantra. Keep chanting it. You know, there's many, many kids around the United States I know. Uh, they have this machine. It's a counter machine. And uh, they do about 1,000 or 2,000 mantra jumps, meaning they just chant Swami and Swami And you press the button while you chant. So it's kind of like helping you count. And they do 1,000 names or 2,000 names. And daily, it's a routine. But compared to those kids, and the kids who don't chant the mantra, you can see their life is completely changed and for the better. But I can speak so much about the benefits, but if you experience yourself, I think you'll understand and see the benefits of chanting the Maha Mantra Swamiran 
because it plays the role of an atom bomb. Saying this, my humble Deshwamran. वर्णिवेशरमणीय दर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्रीगणश्याम महाराज निज ऑलमाइटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और बिलउड गणश्याम महाराज पूज्य गुरु जी भगत जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डू इज जय स्वामी नारायण यस्टरडे इन आवर मंदिर वी हैव सेलिब्रेटेड वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट फेस्टिवल ऑफ आवर सेक्ट एंड दैट इज द साकोत्सव ओके दिस इज अ काइंड ऑफ फूड फेस्टिवल there are so many food festivals that are celebrated in the world but they are different and this is a religious food festival this is also totally different from the others now whenever in swami narayan religion whenever a person or a devotee speak about sakho so then one definitely one's mind definitely come to the village or uh sanctified place of bhagwan swami narayan that is loya dham now we are also sitting here in sri swami narayan mandir loya dham okay but what is the main reason behind any kind of celebration in particular hindu religion there are most of the people who follow the hindu religion but still even though they are following uh, following their tradition and they enjoy and celebrate all of their festivals but most of the hindus they do not know about the reason behind celebration of such festivals they are just celebrating the festivals just as their father celebrating and now they are continue the tradition of their fathers and forefathers there is nothing more than that but here in our sampraday this is not a tradition this is not a kind of thing which the people follow just this is a new tradition and this is the new custom developed and created by bhagwan swami narayan himself 
Even in our Swaminarayan Sampradaya, there are so many celebrations about and regarding the other Hindu festivals. Just like the other Hindus celebrated the festival of Diwali, uh, the Holi and other festivals, same thing also celebrated in the Swaminarayan Sampradaya. But the reason behind the celebration of the of such festivals in Swaminarayan Sampradaya is something different from the others and that is Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his saints they just want to reform the system of the celebrations because before and after some period of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's birth it is a darkness for India there are so many misbehaving, misguiding and so many such things happen in such duration and that's why all the festivals, all the real traditions, all the purity and everything is destroyed by the evil and evil people. But now, one of the reasons behind the manifestation of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and according to that reason Bhagwan himself started to reform this festival not the festival but the system of the festivals and that's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan not only festivals but also the sacrifice sacrificial ceremonies he had reformed and reconstruct their formula and system but this is the Sakoso and this is totally different thing even you cannot find such festival in Hindu religion. So this is the first time in the history of India and the history of Hindu religion Bhagwan himself began this festival in the village Loyadham. Now whenever we remember or we heard or listen about Sakoso we definitely reach to reached by our mind to the Loya Dham and Sura Khachar and everything about Loya. But the main thing is that Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself declared the reason behind such celebrations and gathering of the devotees and saints. Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself says in the third version of the first chapter, Bhagwan says, I gather all of you devotees, saints, brahmacharis, etc. And I also celebrate these festivals like Janmashtami, Ekadasi, etc. on grand level. Why? Because even a wicked person or even a sinner or even an ordinary person who can have the darshan of saints, devotees and even Bhagwan and such celebrations. And if at the time of his death, he remember even a single thing from this festival then that person even though he is a sinner still he gets so, so many and so much merits. This is the reason behind the gathering of the devotees and saints and also the celebrations. But here in Loyadam Bhagwan himself created a new tradition and that is Sakotso. In Sakotso, what is the main thing? Sak of Brinjals. In India, you just remember you just remember these things. In India there is very very cheapest fries of Brinjals. And in people, there is no value of brinjals. And even most of the people, like uh, not only kids but some youths also, do not like brinjals. But so, in this way, brinjals has no value in foodies of Indian people. Right? Now, Bhagwan, Bhagwan Swaminarayan has performed this festival of especially for these 
brinjal's sabji and by by this celebration bhagwan has created a new system a new tradition and in which he had transfer the prizes or not the prizes but the value of the brinjals into the highest level those even even those people who did not like the food dishes of these brinjals they also eat in full dishes this sack of brinjals this is what the miracle performed by bhagwan swami narayan in brinjals now to make a food from this brinjal bhagwan swami narayan himself make this food and he had also used so many other ingredients so the this food also inspire us for not becoming on one point or not becoming a single thing consciousness but we should also gather all of all the other things at one place and also accept the different kinds of people in our life in this food in this food festival bhagwan himself had used the salt sugar turmeric powder chili powder and so many other ingredients now in the society forget the society in the in our satsang there are so many kind of people some has a nature like salt some has a nature uh like a angry person who has nature like a chili powder some person who always speak like a sugar in this way in our satsang there are all kinds of people but if we consider only a person who speak like sugar and forget the salty person or a chili powder like person then we cannot make a proper tasty sack of brinjals this is what the main concept behind this festival bhagwan swami narayan himself accept all kinds of people in his fellowship and when he has mixed all the all such persons in one and purest form then the satsang will develop at this point what we can see its real form today now the other thing is that when bhagwan decided to celebrate this food festival in loya dam then even we know today we cannot easily reach the loya dam india there is no proper road fac- facilities there is no proper electricity facilities there is nothing uh, what we can say uh, these worlds new technologies and others but so we can imagine what had happened what is the situation of the uh, loya dam of before 200 years so there is not a thing that everything is possible to collect in this village so some devotees from the nearest village they have decided to contribute their own things to bhagwan so this festival also inspires us to what we have whether we have only salt or whether we have sugar we have a turmeric powder or anything even we have brinjals which has no value in society still we have to contribute we have to offer whatever we have to bhagwan bhagwan will convert our things in such a manner that everybody accept it this is the third point and now the another point what we can learn from this festival is that bhagwan himself made this food for all 
not for himself only but for all all the saints and all the devotees so by performing this human like action bhagwan swami narayan inspire us for serving others we should not do anything not anything for only our own self our own benefit but we should also perform the same thing for the benefit of others this is also the message from this festival now the another thing is that in this festival bhagwan has a selection of many kinds of cities metro cities and a big towns but still bhagwan has selected this tiny and remote village of sourash why because he also inspire people of the world to focus not only on the cities metro cities and uh, big towns but also concentrate and also used to go in remote village this is the worldly thing but in our in uh, for the benefit of us bhagwan inspires by this thing in our life that we should also find out and we should also reach up to the last level of devotees because the people who believes those devotees that this devotees is a uh, very low level and spirituality but still it the devotee has many thing which we can accept which we can learn from it and that's why by selecting this remote and tiny village of loya for the celebration bhagwan inspires us to find out whatever good qualities in a single devotee which uh, whether the devotee is well known in the satsang or not whether he has any kind of reputation in satsang or not but one thing is that as he is a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan we definitely can find out a uh, not a single but many many good qualities from the devotee so we should forget in our mind that whether a person has a good reputation in satsang or not but it has he has a good qualities in his life and that's why we have to accept these good qualities and imbibe in our life this is the message and inspiration behind this food festival and the story behind and after this festival is that once upon a time this is we know loya dam is a uh, surakhachar was the king of this loya and the nearest village nagarga this two village is under his ruler now once one day when surakhachar was sleeping at night some thieves entered in his house and they run away with the heavy and locked safe from the house of surakhacha but the safe is too heavy so they cannot go far away and just outskirts of the village loya they have no chance but they have only one option and that remain the safe at the same place and run away because it was a uh, early morning so the people will find out that thieves and so they uh, run away but now when surakhachar wake up from morning and he find out his house is broken from back side and then he find out in the house the safe is not in the house then he decided in his mind and he had made a sankalp he decided whether i far find found out or whether i recollect my all of the monies then half of them i'll offer it to bhagwan swami narayan then his wife 
she said to him if you cannot recollect your money from your safe then all the money is stolen by the thieves then what will you, what will you do if you have recollect all of your money that means bhagwan swaminarayan have bhagwan swaminarayan protected your safe not the lock and key so offer all of money to bhagwan swaminarayan this is the understanding of this family because this family is fully dedicated to bhagwan swaminarayan and then after after deciding these and when surakhachar started to search pro, uh, search project of his safe and the thieves then some people came to him and gave some information about his safe at the outskirts of the village and surakhachar found out his safe at the outskirts of the village and then he recollect his all of the money safe now according to his wishes his family's wishes surakhachar went to gadda for invite uh, for giving the invitation of bhagwan swaminarayan and his saints for using this money and uh, when bhagwan swaminarayan came to this village loya then surakhachar offered all of his safe and all of his money and he narrated the stories of the what had happened and then bhagwan swaminarayan used this money and wealth for this celebration now what had happened at the same time when bhagwan himself made this uh, means this food or brinjal at that time bhagwan had wear of one dhoti and a kes as his upper garment now as he is making a food so he definitely covered with some turmeric powder on his dhoti and his upper garments and also some stain of the chili powder and some ghee and etc now the devotees a group of devotees from different villages also came to that village loya for darshan of bhagwan swaminarayan and also uh, to become a part of this festival one of the group of these devotees and in that group there was a devotee and his name was kandas of village bua when he saw bhagwan swaminarayan himself making the food for all then he said to others is this the god he has no sense to wear clothes he had not a uh, he had not a sense to uh, wear to sit and not why are you saying that this is the god then bhagwan himself knew about his intention and uh, what what is in the mind of this devotee now bhagwan himself gave him a darshan a uh, darshan in the form of sri krishna bhagwan as a forearm now after having this darshan this divine darshan this de- that duty concluded and decided in his mind that now this is the god but still he has some doubt in his mind then muktanand swami by talking to these devotees about the human like actions and divine actions of bhagwan all the nature and aspect of bhagwan bhagwan's nature and his divine form then due to the power of muktanan swami stark these groups of devotees all of the devotees they have decided now this is the bhagwan himself and not under this but this is the supreme bhagwan there is no nobody can able to become like him this is the only thing and that is bhagwan swami narayan so from this festival before the story of this festival and after this story of this festival we can also learn 
that whenever we find out or whenever we recollect which we have stolen uh, which we have which we once forget the wish to recollect the things whether the stolen or whether we have a uh, have loss in the business or whatever but when we recollect all this wealth and property or money or anything we should offer it to bhagwan because it is due to the grace of bhagwan we have retain the things now the another thing is that we have to maintain or develop our faith in the form of bhagwan swami narayan that this is definitely an unquestionable unquestionably this is the supreme god there is no one above this god this is the supreme this is also we can learn from this story and for developing such faith in our mind we should also have a company of the saints like muktan and swami now today we have a uh, same muktan and swami in the form of puja guru ji and our saints so now we have many things which we can learn from this festival this food festival this is the unique in hindu religion and also in our sampraday yesterday we have celebrated the same festival here in loya dam mandir new jersey and uh, yesterday even though saints have performed fast still they have cooked the same food for the devotees and all so bhagwan swami narayan himself today even made the same food for all while staying in the hearts of the saints this is the all about sako so now what we uh, what we can find out from this festival according to my intellect let we learn all these things and imbibe the virtues from the devotees and also accept all kinds of devotees in our satsang in our heart this is what all we learn from this festival by saying this jai swami narayan shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jai shri patim shri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam har madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swami narayanam nilakantham bhaje shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jai